Welcome to this overview of PXF Nuke Bench. So perhaps you have a new computer and you want to know if it's any good. Maybe you're a freelancer, you just started at a company and you want to know if the machine that was assigned to you is fast or not. Or perhaps you're making a purchase decision. You have uh, loaner units, test units, and you want to figure out which one is faster. For these cases, of course, we could play with Nuke and go by feeling, but ideally we would need some sort of metric, a benchmark that we can run so we can accurately compare multiple machines. That's why we now have in Pixel Fudger PXF Nuke Bench. So let's get that from the PXF menu here and get PXF Nuke Bench. Nuke Bench has two types of benchmarks. There's the simple benchmark. Simple will run in any version of Nuke, including non-commercial or Nuke Indie. Uh, advanced will only run for full Nuke users. So let's start with the simple benchmark. Let's click the button. I have a warning here. I'm going to need seven gigs of disk space on my temp directory. I will pick that directory in a second and my new cache will be cleared. That's fine. Let's do it. Yes. I haven't specified where to write the temp files. Do you want, do I want to do that now? Yes. And I've already created a folder on my SSD, local SSD called nuke benchmark. So I'm going to pick that folder here and click open and the tests are starting right now. I'm going to run a CPU test, GPU test, a uh, disk write test and a disk read test. So first I'm running the CPU test. It's a bunch of cards in scanline render in uh, 1920 by 1080. We can monitor our progress here if we go in task manager in Windows. And if I click on CPU here, I can see that my CPU is working pretty hard around 100% usage. So I'm going to fast forward through the boring bits for you guys. All right, the CPU test is done. Now I'm running the GPU test. This is a Z defocus node being rendered. So if I look here at my GPU, if I pick a uh, compute zero or perhaps on your computer, it might say CUDA. I can see the GPU activity here and my CPU is barely doing anything. So that's the GPU test running right now. And again, I'll fast forward the boring part. GPU test has been completed and now I'm running the IO write test. So if I look at my disk here, I can see that I'm writing around 300 megabytes per second to disk. It's going to write the two clips on my disk, uh, a 32 bits uncompressed clip to test really big frames and a more realistic 16 bits zip uh, clip. So that's going to use less disk space but more cpu you can see that my cpu is working harder now because it needs to compress those frames here we go now my tests are complete it did the write and read test so let's uh, look at all the numbers so of course if it's the first time you run the test the numbers won't mean much to you but if you have multiple machines you want to compare you can compare the values here bigger numbers are better always for all the tests. So the values here are in frames per second. And for the uh, disk tests, we also have megabytes per second. So this is good if you want to compare different machines, but uh, the real power comes by comparing your own machine with other machines of other users of Nukebench across the internet. So if you want to share your results with others, I encourage you to do so. You can click share results online. This will copy the text here in the clipboard and open a web browser to this website here. So let's do that. Share results online. My web browser pops up and I have a, a Google form here I can fill. So you can uh, give your name if you want to, it's optional. And you can paste your result. So I'm gonna paste my text here and now I can submit here at the bottom left and I get a link to the uh, spreadsheet of, with all the results. Let's navigate there and your results should be at the top or near the very top if another user submitted at the same time as you. Of course, the sheet is pretty empty right now. This hasn't been released to the public at the moment of recording the video, 
but hopefully by the time you get there, there will be more results. So you can see my result here on the top line and I can compare with other uh, results. So the colors are dynamic. So if uh, other users submit faster results, then my result will become more and more red. So this may change over time. But as of today, uh, I'm in the middle of the pack for CPU. Some users are faster uh, and I'm, some users are much slower. Uh, same for the focus and I can see my uh, right test in 32 bits is uh, average in the middle of the pack my read test in 32 bits is in the dark orange so it's not the best and so on so we have four big tests to check we have CPU GPU write and read and the read write tests are in two different formats and expressed in two different units megabytes per second and frames per second so this is how you would compare your own machine with other machines in the community and hopefully by the time we have enough results we'll be able to see some trends maybe intel is faster than amd or vice versa and uh, gpu speeds and which os's are faster and so on maybe linux is faster maybe windows is faster i don't know so hopefully by the time we have enough results we'll be able to uh, get some trends from different configurations so that's it for the simple benchmark. This is uh, the simple benchmark you could run with any version of Nuke. The only adjustment you can do for the simple benchmark is how many frames to run. So if the test is really quick on your machine because you have a monster machine, then you may want to run the test uh, for 100 or 200 or 400 frames aim to get at least a minute or more of uh, tests and way more if you want to test your uh, CPU cooler and so on. Uh, same thing for the disk speed. If you have a very fast disk, you may want to write more frames to get a more accurate result. Alternately, if you have a slow machine and it takes really long to complete the tests, you can decrease the number of frames here. So that's it for the simple benchmark. And now let's look at the advanced benchmark. So the advanced benchmark is a pick your own adventure. You pick which tests you want to run and you have some uh, preferences to adjust here. So first we can adjust how many frames for the benefit of the demo. I'm going to lower this so the tests are faster. So I'm going to do, let's say 10 frames for CPU, GPU and 100 frames for the read write tests. And then you can pick which resolutions. So maybe you have a customer that is on the fence. Should we deliver the VFX at 2K or 4K? And you want to know how much slower it is to do one version versus the other. So we can test both. So I'm going to pick here, for example, 2K and another uh, version at 4K. So now every test will be run twice, once at 2K and once at 4K. So we can compare the results. Same thing with the file types. This is for the write test, of course. So let's check if I, let's say our clients want 10-bit uh, files. They're not really picky about the file format. So I'm debating whether I should deliver, let's say, DPX 10-bit Little Endian and let's say uh, Apple ProRes 422 10-bit. Here we go. So now we've got two file formats that will be tested in the uh, write test. The other preference we have here is where we have some Cattery cat files. So this is an advanced test you can run uh, for the GPU running the inference test. So we can use a cat file for that. We need a cat file for that. Uh, this is not installed uh, with Nuke by default. You will need to download that uh, from the Cattery's website. So let's go on Foundry's uh, Cattery page. And here at the bottom, we've got real as are gone. And we can download that if you have a Foundry account. And once you've downloaded it, you can unzip it and put it in this directory. Actually, you can put the cat file anywhere you want and just point the preferences to that file. But if your file is in the default location, it should be already set here. So I already have that cat file on my system so I can run the inference test. So all my preferences are good. Let's go back to the advanced tab and I want a hardware summary. I'm going to run CPU test, but this time I'm going to use the new uh, 3D environment available in new 14 and above. I'm going to use the uh, ZD focus test, the inference test. I'm going to write uh, in the formats specified in the preferences 
noisy frames because I want to stress test that um, ProRes compression. I'm going to uh, read those files back and I'm going to read them to viewer also. So that's going to include playing back in the viewer. So a more realistic um, uh, metric of how it would behave if I loaded a read and hit play in the viewer. All right, everything is good to go. Let's run the benchmark. It's going to delete everything except the Nuke Bench node. So make sure to run this in an empty Nuke script or in a script where you don't mind losing everything uh, in the in the node graph. So let's do that. And it starts the test. So first it's running our CPU test, but contrary to our uh, quick, uh, simple benchmark, it's going to run it twice. It's going to run it in 2K and 4K. So 2K is done and now it's running 4K. So it's going to run uh, each test twice. And in the case of the right test, it's going to run two resolutions and two file formats. So a total of four clips will be written to disk. So I'll let this run and I'll fast forward through the, the this part and we'll come back after the test is completed to read our report. Notice that I'm running the GPU inference test and my GPU now is really maxed out. I'm using uh, more uh, GPU memory and that will go even higher when we run the 4K test. So inference is a bigger stress test for your graphics card. So if you have a very strong gra graphics card, you may want to check the inference test. So see now I'm at 4K and my GPU is completely maxed out on memory and maxed out on processing. Now we're running the IO read test. So this is the same as the uh, simple benchmark with different resolutions, but we also have the read to viewer test. So now the clips are playing back in the viewer. So this will take into account if I have special uh, viewer transforms, viewer LUTs and so on. So this is a more realistic, but this test is a little bit experimental maybe a bit less stable than the other one, the other uh, read test. So that's why it's not included in the uh, simple benchmark. And there we go. Our tests have completed. So I have my results here in the report. Let's make that a little bit bigger. And let's read our report. So I have all the hardware information about my machine, including where I wrote the files and where is my new cache. So I might experiment with different SSDs if I uh, have uh, more than one. And I have here my CPU test with scanline render, both in 2K and 4K. And I can compare how fast both were. So this one is 0.15 frames per second and the 2k one is 0.68 so much faster in 2k of course that makes sense same thing with the gpu test using z defocus again much faster in 2k than 4k and uh, the other gpu test using the inference node uh, the inference node of course is a companion node with copycat so this is my result in 4k and my result in 2k for the write test, I have more results because I specified two file formats and two resolutions. So for my write test, I have my result in DPX uh, 2K. So DPX 2K and ProRes 2K and DPX 4K and ProRes 4K. And I can see my results in frames per second and I can also see my results in megabytes per second and another useful information is how big the frames are so if you have compressed formats you may uh, want to figure out how big or small the frames will be on disk so now I can see that my uh, 2k dpx files are 8.4 megabytes of frame on average and my ProRes files are only one megabyte per frame so it's an 8 to 1 difference in disk space but much less difference in speed because of course the files are smaller but it takes more cpu power to encode those frames uh, to disk so same results here for my 4k uh, so we can compare the um, the size of the frames so much bigger frames of course in 4k compared to uh, 2k here and same thing with our read test. So the read test is a uh, read uh, straight to memory. No, uh, no viewer involved. So this read, read at 32 frames per second. 
and 20 frames per second in 4K. And read to viewer is including playing back in the viewer. So you can see that once the viewer is involved, the differences are much smaller because you know you might have CPU or graphics bottlenecks. Of course, you can copy paste the report uh, if you want. So you can just as any text editor, control A, uh, right click, copy, and then you can paste it in a spreadsheet or in your notes somewhere if you want to compare multiple machines. So uh, this is very custom. Of course, you can't share that online because everybody will have different uh, configurations. So this is more uh, to compare different machines you may have access to. All right, so that's it for PXF Nukebench. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please uh, share your results online. This will become much more useful if we have a lot of results in the spreadsheet. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.